Okay, let's talk about pharyngitis, and it's a sore throat. There's several things that can cause it, but it's just inflammation of your throat. A lot of times it is associated with a lot of different upper respiratory infections, which you'll probably see written throughout my slides as URIs, and you'll probably hear them referred to that also in clinical settings. Um, so a sore throat, like we said, it can go with different things, either a cold or a more serious um, infection caused by either a virus or a bacteria. The most serious kind of pharyngitis is whenever it's caused by strep A. And if y'all remember from cardiac and um, from GU, strep A also can lead to infections like glomerulonephritis or infective endocarditis or rheumatic carditis. Um, so it's very important that once we know that a patient has a confirmed diagnosis of strep A, um, that we start paying close attention to their kidneys and their heart as well. Um, it's highly contagious. So once you have a confirmed diagnosis, or even before, even if you suspect a diagnosis, make sure you're um, practicing proper infection control. Wash your hands. Um, don't breathe on people. Don't you know kiss people if you're feeling sick or whatever. Like just keep your germs to yourself as much as you can. Right. Um, it also is spread through um, any kind of inhalation or droplet or even direct contact. Um, there's a lot of different ways that this can be spread, so just be careful, okay? Um, stay away from you know small children who you think might have the infection so that you're not getting it for yourself. Um, and especially stay away from anybody who's immunocompromised if you have um, been exposed to or maybe you're showing signs and symptoms of a strep A infection, okay? Um, the incubation phase is usually two to four days, and that's the scariest time because a lot of times you're not displaying signs or symptoms during the incubation phase but you still are carrying the um, infection on your body. So um, during that time is a lot of times whenever the infection is spread um, because you don't even know that you have it. But if you have been exposed to anyone who has a known diagnosis, then just go ahead and start using infection control measures as if you had a confirmed diagnosis. So the first sign is a sore throat. Okay, it starts feeling scratchy, maybe a little uncomfortable, especially when you're eating or drinking. Um, and then you're gonna start noticing that you have trouble swallowing. Um, and that's usually when people start going to the doctor when they feel like, oh, my throat's so swollen, it hurts so bad, I need to, you know, figure out how I can fix this, I can't even drink anything, it hurts so bad. And so if you start hearing things like that, it's pharyngitis, okay? It's just inflammation and, um, and probably a pretty serious infection in your throat. Um, you also might start noticing around that time that they have a fever and some chills. Um, and remember that the fever that we are most concerned about is anytime that it's above 100.5 or 101, okay, if we want to round up. So anytime you see, anytime you see a fever higher than that, um, that's cause for concern. And we really want to start to lower that fever to protect the brain and protect the muscles and protect all kinds of things because a lot of things get in, um, involved whenever you have a high fever. Um, you're probably going to notice a headache and probably some malaise just because of the nature of an infection. A lot of times, um, especially whenever it is um, involving strep, um, you're going to see white patches on the back of the throat. See these here? Um, and that is showing that you have some exudate or some pus or um, whatever that's forming inside your tonsils, or not inside, on top of your tonsils inside your throat. Um, you also will start noticing some swollen glands, and that's why the doctor will feel here right, because you have um, lymph nodes and glands that are in this area. And so if they're swollen, you're gonna be able to palpate that externally. Also, when you um, have that tongue depressor and put it on your patient's tongue and you say, say, ah, eh, that's when you can see the white patches and you'll probably also be able to see um, your tonsils and glands swollen from the inside as well. Um, and that's what's making it difficult for them to swallow and be able to pass food and fluids through there. Not only just the infection causing it to feel sore, but also that swollen um, area there too. Um, to diagnose it, they've got to get a throat swab. And this is very important for you to remember. The throat swab needs to be a sterile cotton-tipped applicator. If it's not a sterile cotton-tipped applicator, then it's not going to be picking up the bacteria that's causing the infection. Instead, if it hasn't, isn't sterile, it might have some kind of bacteria that's lodged on there from maybe sitting in the cup or, you know, whatever. So it has to be sterile because we don't want to mistake a bacteria that's hopped onto that um, little cotton swab from any other place. We need to see specifically what is on the throat. Okay. Um, one of the most common tests that we do, especially to determine if it is um, strep or not, is a rapid strep test. Um, and there's different names for this. Biostar is one of the um, trade names that we use for this test, um, but it's also a strep A optical immunoassay, or you'll see it strep A OIA. 
Okay, and that's telling you that it's a really quick test that we can see usually, I mean, just within a couple of hours to see if the patient really does have strep or if it's, you know, a sore throat caused by something else. Um, usually, um, this culture and sensitivity can take um, 24 hours to grow, and that's going to show us specifically what the microorganisms are that are growing um, in that culture. And that's going to give us a clear indication of how to treat that patient. Because without knowing specifically what is causing it, we just don't know how to treat it. You don't want to just throw an antibiotic at somebody if it's a virus, because it's not helpful. It's just making them take pills for no reason, and it's not going to end up helping their body in the long run at all. And there's some pretty nasty side effects to antibiotics, too. Not good. Yeah. Um, so treatment, it's very important that we see um, a physician early if we are suspecti suspecting, especially a strep infection, because as it grows, it can develop um, you know, more, more serious side effects like the glare glomerulonephritis or the rheumatic carditis and things. And once those things develop, that's a lifetime full of prophylactic antibiotics and making sure that the patient doesn't end up with renal failure and things like that. So it's very, very important that we figure it out early and get them on treatment early, okay? Um, penicillin or some other kind of penicillin derivative is usually the um, gold standard antibiotic that we use, but if the patient is allergic to, an to penicillin, um, then we can put them on something else. All right. Typically, you're going to see a patient on erythromycin for 7 to 14 days, which is kind of a long time to be on an antibiotic. A lot of times when you get those Z-packs, it's three days and you're done, sometimes five days and you're done. 7 to 14 days, that's extensive. And the reason why is because we really want to make sure that we're killing out that infection. And it's so important as nurses to make sure that they're taking all of their antibiotics. If they don't, a lot of times that infection comes back and it comes back with a vengeance because basically the infection is saying, hey, you tried to kill me. What's up? I need to kill you now, and we don't want that to happen. So we want to make sure that we kill it out completely with the antibiotic. Don't leave any stone unturned, right? Okay. So here's a question. A physician orders a throat culture for a client with pharyngitis. What specimen collection technique should the nurse use to correctly obtain the throat culture from the client? I really hope you listened when I was talking just a minute ago because the answer is about 30 seconds ago. Um, so what do you think the correct answer is? I'm going to let you think about it. Think about it. Oh, I didn't put my little star. Sad. Okay, so the answer is C. The nurse swabs the throat with a sterile cotton applicator. It has to be sterile. It has to be. Okay, remember that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop it and we'll come back for the next.